Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain, and sat down there. Great crowds came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet, and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the deformed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind able to see, and they glorify the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, where could we ever get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and, five, and, <clears throat> and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves of the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples who in turn gave them to the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Who remembers the Gospel story of last Sunday? So many hands. <laughs> I don't know who to ask. The Gospel story of last Sunday. First Sunday of Advent. That's a hit. Who remembers? Give us a hit. First Sunday of Advent. Wasn't it about like things were going to happen, bad things, and you better no. be ready? No. 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 Here is Jesus. Uh, oh, there was a brave lady right there. She probably looked into the book, and now she knows the story. No. No, nope. no. Nope. The gospel story was about Jesus says, "Hey guys, remember, be ready. Watch. Ah, now you know. Watch. Yes, because you do not know the hour nor the day when the owner of the house is going to be to come." And he says, "It's like the owner of the house who sets up." The servers and say, hey, be watchful right here. Watch my property. Watch my possession. Watch what I have because I will come back. And he says, and blessed is the servant who will find the watch, the being on guard, being alert. No matter what time the Lord is coming, that he is there, watchful. And Jesus says, watch, be alert. So here we are. What are we watching for? What are we looking for? What are you waiting for? And we will say, in the fear of Sunday of Advent, that we're waiting for the Lord. We're waiting for Christmas to come. We're waiting for this wonderful gift of Prince the Peace to be given to you and to me. And all that the prophets are foretelling about this newborn baby that is going to bring. I'm not going to ask you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? but it's a beautiful journey. And if you just pay attention, if you go to your parishes for the morning masses or afternoon or evening masses, the first reading, not so much for the gospel, but the first reading that speaks about this prophecies about this prince of priests, this hope that is being given to to the people. For example, just yes. You all know this. You all remember. Yesterday was about the prophet Isaiah says, listen, <clears throat> the tree of Jesse has been cut down. That means the king is in slavery. The nation is in slavery. 
There is no future for the nation. The king is going to be cut down. His old lineage of the, of the royal family, no more. And there is where is hope. We are in slavery. And the prophet Isaiah says, but don't be a, a sprout. There is going to shoot up from the stamp of Jesse. The words of hope. Yeah? Look for those words of hope during the season of Advent. Especially from the readings of the, of the prophet. How about today? Or maybe yesterday, there was another thing. Words of hope that a, a cobra and a child are going to be at the same spot in the nest. A, a tiger, a, a lion and a lamb, they will work together, sleep together. Yes, the words of hope. No more divisions. No more differences that we will be. Those who are enemies in the eyes of the world will be no more. There will be no more tears, no more sadness. The words of hope. What about today? Who will tell me what struck you for the words of hope today from the first reading? Who remembers the first reading? <laughs> yeah, a juicy one. There will be a banquet. Yes, there will be a, a wonderful celebration at those moments of when we see the Lord. The celebration that the Lord is going to come. Now I see that you've got a, already started to decorate your chapel for Christmas. Now what comes to mind I think that we're going to light the Advent candle. Four weeks we're waiting for this and this Advent season reminds me so much of the three guys from the East who spotted something and they follow, and they came, came to the Bethlehem, to the, um, to the manger. Three kings, three magis, who somehow were able to see, because they were watchful. It's just like when Jesus says, be watch, be alert. And that's what they, what, what, that was the profession that they had. They were looking to the skies for the signs. They were astrologers. And they found that star, and they said, this is something unusual, we're going to follow. Because it seems like that the star is calling us to follow. And what a surprise when they came to the manger and they brought the gifts and paid the homage. Now the gospel says that it's a beautiful story, because gospel says that when, the guy, when these three guys, uh, you know, left Jesus, they went on to the different road. They didn't go to heaven. They didn't go to Jerusalem. They went to a different road. That's a, an expression that they went home different, somehow inspired, somehow changed. Isn't that what we long that we, is going to happen when Jesus is being born? When Jesus comes to our hearts? When Jesus comes into, to, in our midst? Isn't that when the child is being baptized, when the child receives First Communion, being confirmed, and marriage, and so on and so forth, that something is going to happen, something different. Something that is, that will, when we return to our everyday life, we will be there. And the hope is that these four weeks of season of Advent will do the same thing for us. That at Christmas, the husband will say to, the, to his wife, Wow, where have you been? What happened to you? You have changed. And the other way around too. That the wife will say to the husband, Wow, what a change. I haven't seen that goodness, the kindness in you for months. Where did it come from? Yes, we need to come somehow, come out changed during these four weeks. Because that's the waiting of expectation, that's the times of expectation, waiting, and longing for Christ to come. Now, so that's the major. It's then we turn home different. And I'm thinking, what about Mary? Another beautiful uh, guide for the season of Advent. The angel comes to her and says, Mary, you know, I've got a good news for you. I'd like you to be the mother of my son. Would you say yes or no? And of course, she ponders upon, what does this mean? I don't have this, I don't have that. I'm, uh, you know, like, wow, I'm just a teenager. Are you going to tell me I'm going to be a mother? But then, a trust and a hope, and a beautiful fiat, 
Beautiful, yes. Let it be done according to your word. On the hand of the Lord. And what a beautiful story unfolds afterwards when Jesus is being born. The same thing that is Mary, from that moment when she accepted Jesus, when she gave birth and accepted this annunciation, she was not the same lady anymore. She was different. How about the guy that was going to be, that will celebrate this Saturday? Who is the feast of Saturday? Saturday. Nicholas. Yes. Saint Nicholas. Saint Nicholas. You gotta know these things, you know. <laughs> Saint Nicholas. The same thing. He is the, the bishop who sees the that there is someone who is in need and he goes and helps out. That the beautiful story of him helping the poor family with three uh, children, uh, three girls to help them to to pay for the wedding. And how about the guy that, that we the saint that we celebrate today? St. Francis Xavier, a young man, Spain, goes to Paris and meets another guy who is experiencing a conversion of his life, St. Ignatius of Loyola. He goes to the Paris, because Paris was one of the best universities in Europe at that time. And he goes there and they meet and say, hey, you know, if we accept that Jesus, we've got to do something. If we decide to follow, we got to be different. And they gather seven different friends, and they cr uh, create the Society of, of, of Jesus, the Jesuits. And that's not everything. There's St. Francis Xavier, he takes, no, Lord, if you gave me these gifts and talents that I have, speak the languages, the zeal for the, for the salvation of the souls, I'm going to go to China. I'm going to go to India. And he goes not through the plane, not to the train, not by car, by ship. Imagine how long did it take from Spain to go to China at that time in the 1500s. Probably a month. But he goes there and he gives his life for the people of East to bring them to Christ. How about the apostles of today's gospel too? When they meet this Jesus, they are amazed. What is he doing? What is he preaching? The miracles are happening. And they realize, oh, what do we have? Fish, bread, and he is telling us to feed all of those people. But the beautiful thing happened there when they bring those gifts to Jesus and he feeds those people. It's not the apostles, but he feeds them. What's the moral of all of that? the gospel stories, the, the saints and the, and the apostles. I think the first one, when we follow that star, when we accept Jesus Christ, the great things can happen. Unexpected things happen. Miracles do happen. And when you decide to follow this, it will lead you to a different way of life. You will be different. And I think that's what we want to. That you and I, during the season of Advent, somehow become better, holier, as priests, as sisters, as husbands and wives, workers, co-workers, and so on and so forth, mothers and fathers. And, the, and number three, I think that if we believe that we've got to give some talents, and you've got to believe this, that God gave you something, extraordinary thing, that no one else has it, if you put this into use, and you bring it to God, Christ, Christ is going to bless it and multiply in the amazing thing. And sometimes we will be amazed what can happen. Imagine with this center what had happened when it started. But a few gifts and talents that a few people had and the vocation that, people, that Christ gave, here we are. And the same can happen to you and to us in our families, in our marriages, relationships. We follow the star, we accept Jesus Christ, and we offer him our gifts and talents, and voila, the ride begins, the new journey begins. And I think that's the invitation of the season of Advent for you and for me. And for that, let's pray today that we will answer that, yes, just like Mary did, just like Bishop Nicholas did, 
just like St. Francis Xavier did, and just like amazed apostles did when they brought two fi few fish and a, uh, and a loaves of bread to Jesus, hoping that he will feed the others. And then we will do the same thing. We will be feeding others with good words, with good deeds, with the resources that we have, not necessarily in the money, but the resources that you have in your hands, in your heart, and in your mind. Sharing, proclaiming, living out, changing this world, and inspiring this world, the people they live in, that they will come to Christ too.